If you would like to do a liver detox, though, because you're like, I don't want to be an Allison Morrow groupie. I'm not going to join the editorial board, but I still want to support her. And she can't help my liver, but this can. Then go ahead to getliverhelp.com slash Allison. They're a new sponsor. Totally natural formulation here. We've got artichoke extract, beetroot, milk, milk thistle, turmeric, all kinds of things like uh, flushes toxins from your liver. Most of us are exposed to toxins in one way or another through the air, through our water, uh, through our food. A lot of us are eating too much processed food, too much sugar, too much carbs. Liver can't handle it. The best thing would be to get off of a lot of that stuff. But if in the meantime, you're slowly working yourself off of those chips, this is a great way to give your liver a boost. You'll get more energy from it. It will probably help you with your weight. Maybe not make, making the promise there, but it will definitely help with digestion, constipation, bloating. It helps you take in nutrients. We are going to bring in Bill and we're going to talk about how Reuters is uh, now a national headliner award winner for its reporting on Elon Musk. Now, originally, when I posted this, I thought it had to do with Twitter. But actually, reading through all of it, it's Tesla, SpaceX, and uh, Neuralink, but they're saying, the judges, okay, say so specifically the judges are talking about how Musk's companies, Tesla, SpaceX, and Neuralink are transforming the world, and that Reuters has done remarkable reporting to reveal how progress has been accompanied by the dark shadow of a cavalier disregard for safety and regulations with real world consequences. And the story they're talking about here is uh, specifically about SpaceX. It's a very long story. It's interesting if you want to read it, but it says that SpaceX worker injuries soar in Elon Musk's rush to Mars. And that pretty much sums it up. They talked to some former employees who were complaining about uh, Elon Musk's ownership and about injuries and accidents there. It says underneath here, SpaceX rockets on a launch pad near Brownsville, Texas. The facility had a worker injury rate six times the space industry average in 2022. And this is Elon Musk's uh, thoughts on Reuters. Reuters should get liar of the year award. So that's what he thinks about it. I personally think this is interesting because well, Bill, first up, there are a lot of companies that you could go after. There are a lot of government agencies you could go after for worker injuries. In fact, one of my old coworkers has been investigating a nuclear site in Washington State for a long time. And it is uh, fascinating because it was, you know, parts of the atomic bomb were essentially built there. And all these workers are getting cancer and the government wasn't helping them. Anyway, and she's trudged along on the story for a long time. So it's, it, but it is interesting. Um, it's interesting to, to go after Musk, especially since we know that Reuters is not a huge fan of him. At least they don't mm. seem to be specifically related to Twitter. This is one of their articles from 2022. Twitter not safer under Elon Musk, says former head of trust and safety. And they're, they're here they're not talking about the safety of people like falling off cliffs or engines exploding in their faces and stuff. Um, they're talking about specifically like, you know, the social media platform decision making like there, you know, Yoel Roth was one of the people that they have um, in here cited, and it says that um, Roth was a Twitter veteran who helped steer the social media platform through several watershed decisions, including the move to permanently suspend its most famous user, former U.S. President Donald Trump, last year. His departure further rattled advertisers, many of whom after Musk laid off half of the staff, including many involved with content moderation and um says that uh this is from roth one of my limits was if twitter starts being ruled by dictatorial edict rather than by policy there's no longer a need for me in my role doing what i do so there we have it what do you think bill uh well let's just put it out there reuters has it in for elon musk they've had a hard on for him for years so this isn't nothing new the fact that the national headliners award was given to them for that story i well here's the deal and i i got the article that you sent me i wish i had the article that you had pulled up where it says it's six times uh six times more than the average uh space uh, com uh or space companies industry average okay mm -hmm. how many space industries are there i mean <laughs> seriously well, like three 
I mean, you yeah, got I, SpaceX. I guess they're probably yeah, Boeing. They're gonna say Boeing, but look at Boeing now. Where's the investigation oh, yeah, yeah. into Boeing though? Isn't that interesting? I mean, Boeing's planes are falling yeah. apart midair with passengers mm -hmm. on board. And yes. um they deserve so much more scrutiny. And then didn't like some guy who was testifying against them just die in his car? Like he allegedly committed suicide in his car. What? Yeah, one of the whistleblowers, so. he committed suicide in his car, but they did still have congressional hearings with two other whistleblowers. It was two or four other whistleblowers from Boeing. Now, what is going to be done about it? Who knows? I mean, I don't even remember watching the congressional hearing all the way through. Uh, I don't know if there's been any decision or any kind of fines or anything levied against uh, Boeing. But yeah, I mean, so if you've got, let's, let's be generous and say 10 uh, space industry companies. And if none of them have a workplace injury and then Elon Musk, SpaceX has six, is that really a news story? Is that something that deserves, not only is it, is it really a news story, but not only that, is it worthy of an award? I, I this, don't. This says, this is the article, Reuters documented at least 600 previously unreported workplace injuries at Musk's rocket company, crushed limbs, amputations, electrocutions head and eye wounds, and one death. SpaceX employees say they're paying the price for the billionaire's push to colonize space at a breakneck speed. I mean, and that basically does sum up the article. That's that's what they're alleging. Again, it, yeah. it, this was before the award came out, but I'm wondering if they like they knew that they were going to get it or some, there was a press release that came out or, or maybe not. Maybe he didn't even know they were going to get this national headliner award. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he says they should get liar of the year award. And guess what they did because they won the national headliner award, which is some of the submissions <laughs> you would look at and say, yeah, that, that could get liar of the year award. So, and at some of these awards, I'll tell you what, I do feel like they go, they go to the liar of the year or, I guess liar would assume you know better, but a lot of these people I don't think know better. And I'm not trying to say that the Reuters article, I mean, I haven't investigated their investigation. So I'm not sitting here saying that that what they're saying is incorrect or fact, you know, factually wrong. Mm. I just, you know, I just think it's interesting that um, you know, it, it that was a very long article and it it is, you know, if all of that stuff is true, it's it's not good. <laughs> it's definitely not, at all. not good. Um but, you know, it is always interesting to see how the media chooses who they want to, quote, investigate. I mean, looking back at the Trump administration, one of the things that's just a constant cacophony over and over again is just like, you know, even the guy, that guy, Uri Berliner, who wrote the NPR piece mm -hmm. saying NPR sucks, even he was like, I know what happened when we started covering Trump, who does have a problem with telling the truth. Well, like what president has not had a problem with telling the truth? I don't know. So I just I just think it's interesting the 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 choices that we all make. We all we all make them. Obviously, we all we all focus on one thing or another. I focus on censorship. So that's and you know, yeah, the media has not really loved Elon Musk. So they're not doing him any favors. I guess that could sum this up. <laughs> they're definitely not doing yeah, him any favors. That that's basically it. But wasn't it just about a month ago uh, we did a tittle tattle talking about uh, Jen Saki won a, a free speech award. So what are what are these media company or these uh, these people that give away these awards? What are they doing? What are they thinking? What is their mindset? I mean, I I don't get it. I don't understand it. Um, there's actually a really cool show. It used to be a cool show. Uh, our good friend, um, shoot. I just blanked on his name, but our, our mutual good friend from Hollywood, uh, Felix Montana, he plays in uh, the show on Apple TV called the, uh, uh, the morning show in the last season of that show. They have a character that is basically Elon Musk in pointing him in this light that he's just this terrible human being. And he's trying to destroy free speech and uh, buying up these media companies and breaking them off. So I I'm just trying to figure out, why does he get all the hate and why does it seem that so many different journalists, uh, journalists outlets are out to get him? I, I, I honestly think that the, the, well, look, okay. I'll, I'll show you. Um, okay. This is the judges. This is the judges comments about this particular story. 
Mm -hmm. But let me just read this. By penetrating into the inner workings of these companies, Reuters shows the critical role that journalism has in ensuring that companies meet their responsibilities to ensure the safety of their employees and their customers, regardless of the benefits of their technology. And I think that says a lot because if you were to translate that into what Twitter's role is, okay, let me just scroll back mm -hmm. up to this so you can see it a little bit bigger here. They're saying that we have to ensure companies are safe for their customers, regardless of the benefits. And okay, the employees, let's take that out for Twitter, right? I, I okay. But go back to this, you know, Twitter's not safe under Elon Musk. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. What what did they mean by safety exactly? And I, you know, I think I point out that they have interpretations, he calls them a liar, I'm mm -hmm. going to call, I'm going to say they have different interpretations of what, what some of this stuff means. But if you go back to this, th that basically sums up how a lot of journalists look at Elon Musk and Twitter. And that is better to restrict speech, better to restrict quote, whatever they could decide is misinformation, you know, quote, um, their lies, you know, <laughs> liar of the year, whoever they decide are, is a liar of the year, because the safety of the users is more important than the benefits. And that's how they, and I look at it the opposite <laughs> that, that actually, well, first off, I question this, the idea of safety anyway, because they never take into account when it comes to speech anyway, that their club actually pr promotes quite a bit of uh, danger and misinformation. They never like include themselves in that. But then mm -hmm. secondly, they, yeah, they don't see the benefits. They, 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 they tend to think that, that safety and restricting speech is better than taking a chance with having, having the risk of negative or, and or lies end up on the internet at the benefit of having actual truth. They would rather suppress truth you know, they would rather suppress truth to save a little bit of misinformation from getting out there. Mm. Whereas I would rather allow misinformation to get out there in order to preserve truth. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And I think that's, I mean, if you see that's what these judges think, like just, just assume <clears> we're not <throat> talking about explosions in your face at a rocket facility, but we're just talking about speech online. You can totally see... I could totally see them writing this about, say the whole article was written about Twitter. I could see them saying this about, you know, Twitter mm -hmm. safety of employees and customers, regardless of the benefits of their technology. So yeah, you got it. It's all about safety. And Elon Musk is, is a rogue according to them when it comes to information safety, he votes for the wrong person or talks to the wrong people or whatever they don't like about him. He tends to align himself with the wrong people and he's been fighting back whether you like him or don't like him, I mean, he's he's very vocal about his disdain for the corporate press. And so, like, and I'm, like, totally freaked out about Neuralink, and I think it's a terrible idea, and I, I'm i not, like, an Elon Musk groupie at all. I think some of the stuff he's involved in, like, it's changing the world in a way I don't like at all. Mm -hmm. um, but that said, I I do think it's fair to say that the press does not like the guy. Yeah, at all. There. So what? Yeah. But whatever. I mean, I, I I just don't get it. I really don't. I mean, maybe he's done some evil things or said some evil things or whatever. But I mean, I, I don't know the guy from Adam. I mean, I know who he is and what he does, but I don't know him. Um, I don't work for any of his companies or anything like that either. But I don't know. Maybe there's something he's done to these companies. I mean, obviously the. Uh, journalists love billionaires to start with because I mean, Jeff Bezos, you know, they don't really say too much about him anymore because he bought the Washington post or the Washington journal or whatever it was, the one that he owns. So I think maybe they're just not in the business of trying to work with Musk or have him, you know, be this end all end all person. <clears throat> but either way, find something else. All right. Well, go join Alice tomorrow. Uh, 
community over on Locals, alisonmorrow.locals.com. You can be on the editorial board, five bucks a month. It's a great way to support my work. You get the full show and everything like that. You can send me some mail, P.O. Box 3355, Danellen, Florida, 34432. It's a great way also um, to support. And, of course, there's the Allison Wine Club, allisonwinepromo.com. Stay tuned because in just a few days, you're going to hear from Diego, who is the guy who goes all over the world to find the most extremist wines. So he is, he's responsible for turning us all into extremists and he's the OG extremist, frankly, he's the OG wino <laughs> extremist and he's going to be a fascinating listen. I interviewed him last week. He's, he got, he's got a fascinating job. And, um, and I think you'll learn a lot from him. Um, wine is following kind of the same trends as the food industry. And maybe you're not into wine, uh, which in which case you probably wouldn't want to become part of the club because you'll get all this wine and you won't have anyone to drink, but you could give it away as a present if you're not a drinker. Um, but I think even if you aren't, you'll be interested in what he's got to say. And we're going to hear from him every month. It's a great way to support. So Allison, wine, Um, 